Okay, let's continue. Let's open a new window. And there's our cubes, but notice they aren't rotating anymore. Let's drop back a step to lesson two. And I have already made a new variable, instance variable, called first translation vector. So let's go in here where we have our draw lesson two. And let's make a local variable just so it'll shorten our typing a little bit. Let's call it first v and say first v equals first translation vector. Okay, and now Instead of giving it hardwired numbers, we can give it variables. Which won't change anything because I've already set it to the same values. Okay. But we could go ahead, since we have a first vector, we can actually go over here to window, lesson, first, translation, vector. Let's call it AVEC. And we can inspect it at the same time that we're retrieving it if we spell everything correctly. All right, so it's a vector three, value 15, zero, and six. So let's go ahead and change a vec slightly and say the z value is going to be O. minus 12. And sure enough, since it's not a copy but the actual object, we don't even have to set it, it goes back. Alright, so now as usual we can set a slider and make it come forward or back. Alright, that's cool. Well, let's go back to uh, lesson 5. Let's look at draw lesson five, which calls draw lesson five triangle. Draw lesson five triangle. Hmm. Okay, well, we can probably just go ahead and say um, a vec. And just as before, we can we could say a vec colon equals first translation vector. Since it's inside our methods, we don't have to use the accessor method. We can refer to our instance variables directly. So that's what I'm doing. So we want a vec x. AVEC Y AVEC Z. Assuming no typos, we save it. And it changed slightly. So we could actually go back over here and we could remember we've already accessed this. So let's set this to, oh, say, minus 5 again. Do it. Brings it forward. Let's set it back a little bit. 6. Okay, that's pretty cool, but we already knew we could do this. So, let's go back to, oh, say, um, inspecting our lesson. Here's our inspector. Notice we have a first translation 
which is a vector. But we don't have a second translation. That cube is going to be controlled by a second translation. So let's do this. Second translation vector colon equals vector 3 with an x value of what did we say it was? Let's find out what the quad is currently. One point five and one point five X a Y of zero point zero and a Z of minus seven point zero. And we do it. Well, it says, I don't know what the heck that is. Remember, this is in the middle of the inspector window. So I'm going to declare an instance variable. And it says it compiled it. And if we check the instance variables of Morph Tutorial, we now have a second translation vector. Right there, see? So let's copy that. Go back to our draw quad thing and repeat the same process. Call it sec vec or something along that line. S vec equal colon equals second translation vector and then we're going to put Make this value a setback x. A setback y and a setback z. Of course, I don't remember what they were, so we're just going to have to... Yeah, there we are. Okay, secfix, command Z that out, go up there, secfix, Z. Okay, we save it. That shouldn't do anything because we saved those values. All right, well, just to make sure that we're not going to screw up the next time we make a new one of these windows, let's add this line of code that created the variable in the first place at the bottom for our initialization routine, our initialize method. Save it. And now, if we're going to grab our first vector, let's call that avec2 equals second translation vector. First, we're going to make accessors. Go over here, create instance var accessors. Now, we can go back over here. And now we're going to say a vec2 colon equals oh, what? Let's make it the same as the other one. And then we can start playing around with it if we need to expression and copy too much ah, okay avec z colon minus 6, and avec z2 colon minus 6. Slight typos there, and I didn't notice them at first. Okay, so, all right. So now we have individual control over those two objects. And I forgot to correct that typo. There we go. 
Now let's set them spinning. We want our rotation angle to be 5.5 and 5.5. Typos aside, we just created new instance variables using the inspector window and then went back and added them into our code. If we were to close this out and reopen the windows, they would be in the position we set them in originally and they would still respond to those if I remember which one is which there we go thank you very much they would still respond to the same manipulations we did before so you make two Minus 16, and we can set them rotating. One is 1.5, and the other is positive 5.5. There we go. So I created all these neat new variables various different ways, and I was able to manipulate them. Of course, we could go ahead and create sliders, put them in this window, etc., etc. And in fact, I think you get the idea. We could do the same thing with our colors. We could do the same thing with any of the other instance variables that we've created or that we still create because we can create them on the fly and then go back and paste in a new initialization for the vector or for the variable we just created. So, wow. Pretty much anything you can do with OpenGL, you can manipulate interactively with Squeak as you write the code. And then, of course, you can go back and play with it. You can add a nicer interface. So you get the idea. Um, there's many other variables we could manipulate. I may manipulate them in shorter tutorials just saying here's what this variable does, here's what this variable does, but you get the idea.